Hello guys and welcome back to 737 DIY Sim. I'm Carl and in today's episode we are going to build the 737 single seat AFDS. Now let's get straight into it, we've got our main body here. Of course the first thing we've got to do is insert some brass inserts for the screws. And we've got three holes top and bottom and they need to be populated with thread inserts. The four outer ones of the six are M4. So we can put an M4 thread insert on the tool and then hopefully just guide it in. There's one, nice and quick. They go in really well. I am actually gonna pull the tip off, there we go. And I'm manually gonna try and cheat here to put them in with the soldering iron. Yeah, that one went in okay. And there we have it, that's the base unit with the thread inserts fitted. We've got the four M4 on the outer side and we've got two M3s in the middle. Next up, we've got our mini toggle switch. Now this is a free position on, off, on. And we're just going to wire that up first because it's going to go into the recess of the body. Now, many of you know that I've started creating PCBs and I'll probably get a lot of stick for not putting the switch on the PCB. Now, there's a really good reason for that. And that is to get the right lighting depth, this had to be a certain size. So you get a nice even glow of the indicators. If you mounted the switch on the PCB, it wouldn't even protrude the surface. So that's why it's separate. Okay, let's get back to it. Let's get some wires attached. So that's our switch soldered. Bring in the heat gun. Now this part can be quite awkward. You have to feed the switch in and then try and get the nut in. And there's not enough room to get a socket in there unless you've got a thin walled socket. And let's just tighten that up. So what I'm gonna do is use the screwdriver to bring it down. Next up, we've got our laser etch faceplate. Now you can 3D print this at home. So I'm just gonna peel that off. Now she's ready to be fitted. And we're just gonna line it up and push it into position. So there's the main body of the unit done. We can put that to one side. Let's do the buttons next. Just gonna put the diffuser lens in. Once again, making sure you get the taper inwards so it gets tighter the more you insert it. We can bring in our AFDS button lenses. And once again, gotta make sure that the protective film is off the back. And I'm hoping they're just gonna push tightly into the buttons. Like so. And the buttons now, just gotta make sure we get them in the right order. So it's gonna be AP first, then AT, then FMC. That is how it's going to look on the outside. So once again, we can put this assembly to one side and work on the custom PCB. So these are the new PCBs I created for the AFDS and I've tried to get as much information onto these boards as possible. You can see that we've got the three sets of four tactile LEDs that go here. We've got one single 33 ohm resistor that has to go in here, it's labeled. And then we've got space for four three millimeter LEDs here, normally warm white for the backlighting. At the top and at the back here is the header pins. With the tactile LEDs, we're gonna need two colors as I've mentioned already. We're gonna need yellow and red, and each one is marked what color it should be. This was missed from the last version, so this should really help get the colors in the right place. Okay, so let me grab yellows first. That's my tin here, a little pot. Grab a slack handful. We're looking for the long leg, which is the anode, and we're just gonna feed that in. And these normally just push into position quite easily. There we go. 
So the first two enunciators, the AP and AT, are dual colour. I'm going to leave that one out because it's got, can't tell which is the long leg of the LED. There we go. And the FMC reset, that is all yellow. Put the yellows away. Bring in the reds. Uh, we only need four of these. Looking for the long leg, in they go. Clunk click. Now before we go any further, you really want to make sure that they are all flushing at the same height. Otherwise it's going to make pushing the buttons really quite awkward. We can put it on the mat and we can now get to soldering them in position. Now we'll give the LED legs a trim to make it look tidy. So before we go on to the next step, I just want to make sure that all those tactile LEDs are seated nice and level. Next up we've got our 33 ohm resistor and we're just going to feed that in, bend the legs over and put it into position. And that's it situated there. We can solder that into position now. Trim those legs. And of course we've got the header pins to do. So we need six. One. They go in from this way. And we're just going to solder one pin. So we can ensure that they're straight. There we go. Yep. And that looks pretty good there. We can put the next set in. And I've said this before, I'm using DuPont header pins. You can actually use any connector with a 2.57 pitch. Millimeter pitch that is. Okay, so there's the second row. Quick blow to cool it down. They look nice and straight, so I can go ahead now and solder the other 10 pins. And that now just leaves the four three millimeter LEDs to go in. This is just for backlighting. So we've got the flat side of the LED on the PCB board. Going to make sure that the shorter leg goes in there. So before we solder the LEDs in position, now you can solder them flat with the board, there's no problem. It just dims the light a little bit. So I'm going to feed the wires of the switch through the PCB. There they go. We're going to join the two together temporarily. In fact, if I put it on the end of the mat there, that's even better. And you can see that the LEDs are dropping to the exact height they need to be. I think I might put an M3 screw in PCB just to hold it there while I solder them in place. So now that the LEDs actually are at the correct height, we can solder them exactly where they need to be now. Quick clean of the soldering iron, bit of solder, and away we go. We can trim those legs now. I'll just take this back apart so you can see what the PCB looks like now with all the components fitted before we finally button it up as a complete unit. There we go. So there's our finished PCB. We can see that our LEDs have got a long way to travel to get the light to the faceplate and they're all connected by the connector at the back. I'll put this back together for the final time, hopefully. Of course, I've not tested it yet, but we'll test that in position in a second. So there's the back of the unit fully finished, going round to the front. There's the front. There's the button presses. So I guess the next thing to do is to now apply power and make sure all the LEDs work. I've got my wiring diagram with the matrix in front of me here. Pin seven is the ground. Next one to it is AT red and the, the ground has just popped off. There we go, AT red. That works really well. Next one, pin nine is AT yellow. 
pin 10, AP red, AP yellow. Now we have to go to the other side, I believe, if I remember right. Pins FMC, yellow is one and two. Oh, that makes it nice and easy. So there's two of the LEDs out of the four, and the other one there, there we go. So that's them both working. Of course, on the Arduino, they'll be both powered at the same time. So let's test the backlight in and see what we get. Power going on. Yeah, that works really well. So we've got a fully functioning unit. It looks quite good from the front. It looks quite good on the back. Let's get it fitted to the MIP panel behind me. Now space is really quite tight in here and fitting this in here and getting back to both sides and filming both sides is quite difficult. However, here is the back shell. Now, the reason why I'm mentioning this is the back shell, it's 3D printed in filament on the Bamboo Labs X1. It's come out absolutely beautiful. However, I did forget to show you that I fitted brass inserts into the case here. This is gonna to mount to the back of the MIP in that exact position, and we need to mount that first. From the front, we've got some M4 by 10 millimeter screws. And they're gonna screw in to the four corners. Okay, so there's two in, two started, shall we say. So all we've got to do now is feed these cables through the hole, like so, feed the unit in. Then from the back side, we've got some M4 screws. They're gonna locate into the center unit. And this is gonna pull the center unit into the outer unit and hold it firm in place. And that is the unit all fitted. Now you probably can see that the monitor is fitted in the back here. It's temporarily fitted. This actual aluminum clip is from the old dual seat MIP, but I hope to intend to actually 3D print some proper mounts to hold the, the monitor in the correct position the whole way along. The same for the base of the monitor here, that'll have some 3D printed mounts that can just put it up against it and hold it in place. As for the front, that's now another panel all complete. Well, it's built, I'm just gonna wire it up, but that's in a big video at the end uh, because we all know that wiring can be a bit dull. I've also gotta make it look pretty on camera. Next video is probably gonna be the lights test panel as we work around. And then we've got the bigger panels towards the end there. From me, I'll leave you with these closing clips. Until the next video, guys, sim out.